Sturla Holmleg Gride has officially launched his vlog for the 2023-2024 biathlon season and you know that I have to react to it. How's it going biathlon fans? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian Halligan. This is my YouTube channel about biathlon. The second best biathlete in the world, Sturla Home Lagride, launched his vlog a couple weeks ago and he's been putting out some content. Today we're gonna react to his latest video at the time of this recording and it's just labeled Training day. That's the title of the video. So so let's see if Sterla can make entertaining content out of just a measly training day <laughs> as a biathlete. Hello. Hello. Fans wrong, yeah. Painting. Painting the rifle. So that's why I drew the I went to Bersha Little Sista Mountain at not the Kansha Bird of Art. Okay. Tänkte jag skulle markera här hur jag vill grava ut. Jag tar ett stycke med tre som går här och så tar jag ett litet stycke som går här tänker jag. Så det är en två stycke och så vill jag ha tid och kapacitet ett stycke här och men tricks är att pressa ut flatt och akkurat nu så har jag inte någon möjlighet att göra det men jag tänkte jag skulle se om jag kan lägga en liten rik ute. This is really cool because um, this is something that a lot of the top athletes will do is, you know, when you buy a biathlon rifle from the store or something like that, you know, it can get you going, get you started if you're more casual. But at this high level, like really, really small differences in your position can make a huge difference um, on the World Cup because we know that the difference between going clean and having uh, one miss or two misses is huge difference. Um, but when he had mono, he, he said that he really studied Martin Forcade and his style and his, uh, specifically his shooting position, his setup, his rifle setup. And so I think Sturla is one of those athletes that's just super dialed and super in tune with his, his setup and everything. So it's really cool that we're getting an insight look as to, you know, what he's, what he's doing with his rifle and some of the thought that's going into, um, yeah, just his, his rifle setup. Anytime you're taking a hacksaw to your rifle, it always so, gives you a little nerves. Now I'm going to lean on this side. I'm going to set it on stand. Lean with epoxy lean and fill it in with sprekkene with a little wood filler. I'm going to just get it to the side. The Dremel. Dremel's the best friend when it comes to rifle maintenance. I was at the Ringnes Herre I was at the book again. Oh, yeah. dagen, så jeg på bok 2. Jeg leste Ringnes Herre for lenge siden. Ja. For det var sånn, jeg hadde lyst til å se filmene, og så var det 11 års grense. Og så pappa, <laughs> hvis du leser boka først, så kan du se filmen. <laughs> og så begynte jeg å lese, det var sånn 9-10 år gammel. Ja. <laughs> Men jeg tror jeg fylte 11 før jeg var ferdig, så var det sånn, ah, waste. <laughs> jeg trengte ikke lese. All right. Okay. Good tour. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Notice how he's wearing a helmet and high vis on the road. It's always good to be safe out there. This is good. No pole is super good for athletes to build that leg strength. I'm glad that he shows that he threw some no pole into his workout. Okay, Sterla's classic technique's a little bit rough. 
but uh, hey, we're biathletes, we don't race classic. But biathletes do train classic, as you can see. Vi kan starte om vi synger med gitar. Ja. Det er kanskje den fineste gitaren jeg har, da, sånn sett. Jeg vet ikke hvor mange vi har i tellingen. Jeg visste at Sterla var så inn til gitar som spiller musikk. Jeg hørte ikke noe om det. Gitaren startet allerede på barneskolen. Vi hadde noen sånne prosjekter vi skulle lage noen sledgreier. Så lagde jeg en sånn gitarhals da. Men da kunne jeg ikke nok om hvordan man lager gitarer. Og så har jeg etterpå bare, ok, jeg bare dritter i det. Jeg lager ikke noen til gitaren min her, men jeg gjør noe morsomt med den. Så det blir liksom en motsatt gitar da. Sånn. Det er ikke så veldig deilig å spille på en hals som er sånn her. Og så til sist, men ikke minst. Oi. Så... Vi møkler oss litt om da. That's pretty sweet, actually. And then also seeing all the biathlon stocks in his closet, it would be really cool if he incorporated a uh, biathlon stock into a guitar, and then you had a guitar that just looked like a biathlon rifle. <laughs> that'd be that'd be super sweet. All right, go to. Man, I. So I've tried this, not roller skiing, but like running, listening to even like a podcast, but like listening to people talk while I'm training is just so hard for me. I would just rather listen to music uh, and kind of, you know, get into that flow state. Yeah, even like I said, even podcasts, it's just, it's so hard for me to stay concentrated um, on what I'm doing and also listening to what they're talking about. So it's crazy. He's listening to a, a, an audio book <laughs> while he's training. That right there, do you see him going down the hill and like with the super wide V? Everyone always asks, you know, how do you stop on roller skis? Well, that's it. <laughs> you just got to get that super wide V, press your feet into the into the pavement and just hope that you can stop. And you just also got to be smart about your routes. You can't be going flying down a hill into like a four-way intersection with stop signs because uh, it might not be good. So we have to take the road up. Take the road up? Type, I don't know. Du vet ikke. <laughs> du kan se. Det var fra samlingen av der nede. Ja, det var den der nede. Ja, må kanskje et tak til venstre. Jeg kan si det er greit. Åh, oh, det blir kaldt. Vi må begynne å gå litt. Ja, men bare bli ferdig. Ja. <laughs> bare bli ferdig. Stille seg pinn. This is really well edited. Let's go! Welcome to the training. It's cold. It's not what I did before. It's just a long tour. 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 I think it's just a long tour. I think it's the last tour with shooting and rulleski in the year. OK plus OK, can we say. Let's go. Let's go. Det er andre bekymringer som preger mitt sinn. Stress over formen og skyting av alt, egentlig. Selv om jeg ikke virker som jeg er stresset, så er det litt sånn... Ja, jeg kommer til å være god i år, liksom. Det er ikke en garanti for at man gjør det bra, liksom, selv om man har trent. Men men... This is really interesting. Like, I mean, the dude has come in second on the World Cup overall, I don't know, three years in a row now. He's arguably the second greatest biathlete in the world at the moment. And even he has nerves going into the season. And he's just, you know, not sure about how things will go. So really cool insight to see that that's how he's feeling. And, you know, it just goes to show you that even the best in the world, they get nervous sometimes. Um, but it's it's okay to be nervous. And you can still perform while being nervous. <laughs> so that's the sport in life. Man kan bare gjøre noe med det man kan gjøre noe med, og så ikke stresse over det man ikke kan gjøre noe med. Ja, det er det beste advice du kan gjøre. Det er så fint, fordi jeg tror at børsen er litt lett. Og det å kunne legge på disse to vektskivene, det kan vi kanskje vite om vi skal ha. I fjor så var den jo fem gram rett under, når jeg kom på første bølkeft, og fikk jeg jo panikk. Men heldigvis var det treningsdag da, og ikke renn. 
Og det jeg gjorde da var at jeg tok Jeg fant en stein ute Så tok jeg den inni her Bare kylte den opp i håndgrepet jeg Så ville du? Og så tok jeg på vekt på den Så var det den på da Og da gikk dette var så la jeg på her da Så jeg hadde liksom 20 gram ekstra Ok, ok Men, uh, Så du gikk ikke World Cup med Nei, jeg gikk ikke med stein håndverket Da var det sånn 3501 gram liksom Good for you wow. That's great That's a great story <laughs> All right, that was pretty sweet. And actually, this was a really good insight as to like what the life, the daily life of a World Cup uh, biathlete or just athlete is. Um, as you can see, you know, he went out for like three training sessions in a day. He's at the range constantly. But the other thing too is, is yeah, okay, maybe you're doing like an hour, two hour training session at a time. In between those times, you know, you're working on your rifle. He didn't show him very much of like dry fire and stuff, but you know, there's other things that happen in between the races and in between the training sessions that it's a full-time job, especially if you want to get to his level where he's, again, probably the second best biathlete in the world. Um, so it's really cool to see that, uh, you know, he just gave this little insight into you know, his daily life. And it's also cool to see how much he put into his rifle. But it's just really cool to see how much small, tiny details go into making his rifle perfect. Um, but yeah, it's really cool to see a little bit of Sterla uh, outside of the biathlon world and just, you know, doing his thing. He looks like he is a great chef and great cook and making great meals. Um, and then, yeah, just really giving it all on his, you know, rifle preparation, ski preparation, gets out and does the training even by himself. He didn't train with really anyone during that entire video. So it just goes to show you, you know, you got to get out and train when you can and you got to put your hours in. So, all right, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button because there will be more biathlon content coming out all season. But until next time, we'll see ya.